we have a small but minor crew here today. Uh, <laughs> and we're being a little bit uh, casual on the AV every few minutes past. So my apologies. Um, for this, before we get going too farther, too much farther, uh, just not programming, I'm just going to um, list off the folks who are online so everybody in the room knows who they are. Um, there's some safety things happening here. So online, we have uh, Sean Kennedy, uh, new Everett resident uh, here. Uh, Jake Rain, Florida resident of CSRC. Michael Tapanaro, um, I believe Sonoma County planner. Uh, Colin Beatty, who's a board member and the community transit. Sylvia Anderson, who's ever got four minutes. Ty Clairwell, who is a board member. Uh, Bill, I don't know which Bill. Has it, Actually, I mean, Bill is here, Billy. Yes, no, but there's also Bill online, and it may be the father. Uh, I don't know who it's It was me, because I was reading the other uh, one. Um, so that's who's online currently, and I will try to keep it. Those in the room, Tom Kavinsky with Compass Hut. Um, Rob, Rob Mullard. Yep. Um, Lee Tackett with um, uh, Buzz N. Um, Council Member Paul Ryan. Joe Speakers. Danielle Kubota. Neil Manny. Ed Peterson. Brock Howell. Our audiovisual, and then uh, Ben uh, Austin, our uh, Maricopa District member, is also here uh, directing people in the room. So that's who we have here today. Uh, excited to have you. And I think we'll go ahead and kick this off. If you have any additional AD things, please try to let me know. This is not my optimal setup, uh, so I will try, try to keep track as we go. Thank you so much. Well, let me uh, welcome you all to the sixth annual meeting. Uh, this organization was founded in June of 2017. Um, so uh, we've had six uh, semi-annual meetings, six, this is the sixth annual meeting. Um, uh, and uh, I think you'll witness today that there's been a significant growth the evolution of the organization. And uh, we're very excited to share that with uh, everybody that's in attendance today. Um, introductions have been done. Uh, I think uh, we'd like to start off with a little update the report from the city council. Uh, we've had a significant engagement with the city administration uh, this year, and the uh, city council uh, has been. Uh, actively reviewing the work uh, proposed to, to our BIA. So you had something you wanted to Yeah, answer? just a, a few things before we hand it over to Council Member Ryan here. Um, just uh, for those of you who are new to the organization, uh, know who our board is, um, is currently Ed Peterson and President Jennifer Cross, who just joined us online. Our Vice President Ty Farrell, Joe Seeger, Sylvia Anderson, Will B.B. Gretchen, Vincent, Daniel Cardozo. Chambers, um, Lori Fox, Neil Maddie, Joe, Joe, you're listed here twice, uh, Chuck Watts, and Brenda Wayne. Um, and then staff includes myself and Ben uh, through the Merit for Vista program. And uh, over this fall, we have contracted with Kathy Solberg for our convergence plan. Um, our membership, I'm not going to list all your names here, uh, but definitely want to thank. Uh, you individually as well as organizationally for Compass Health, Cohort, WEW, uh, NG, and Partners, United Way, WTW, and YWCA, as well as our public agencies, which uh, are major contributors to, to the organization. So thank you all. Um, finally, our sponsors uh, for the organization, uh, Kaiser Permanente, will provide uh, the Sanford grant support this past year for the emergency collaborative as well as the sponsorship. Um, and Glacier and GKAR have been very supportive this year as well as this year. So thank you for that. 
Uh, for those who are new to the organization, again, here's our boundaries. Um, so this is just a, a rough estimation of basically from the south end, 41st Street, so the overpass, um, up to Hewitt, and from Broadway to I-5. It's been in their boundaries. And that, I hope that's a efficient introduction uh, to get a little bit of before we go to Paula, I want to do a shout out for Delta Marriott Hotel. Danielle Camoto, general manager. Thank you so much for providing space for our annual meeting today. Um, two more introductions before we get going. Noah, um, our most recent member has just joined us, uh, as well as Chuck Watts from Z Sport, who's extinct. So thank you. Uh, welcome to both of you. And now I'll hand it over to Councilmember Ryan. Um, and we enjoy at the beginning of every membership meeting having an update from the City Council. Now that we have two council members who represent the district, uh, Councilmember Ryan is currently outside of her district, uh, just barely, uh, but on the other side of the tracks uh, is District 2. Okay. So, yes, so yes, the uh, speaking of districts, uh, every 10 years, I'm Paul Ryan, I'm City Council District 2, and our boundaries for the districts uh, just changed this year, even though we had uh, a four in the district about a year ago. Uh, so every 10 years is the, uh, we have two words for every 10 years, the uh, 70 of the annual <laughs> uh, census, and with the census numbers that come out, uh, district boundaries change. So, the new districting map was recently approved by council. There weren't too many changes. Uh, district one extends a little bit further south. So district so district two and district one now basically split the downtown area and then the boundary through the uh, state strategic alliance area also shifted a little bit. So it is still split between Council Rabaki and I, but there's a little bit more in district one and Council Rabaki district than there have been previously, but there's still better. So, uh, so we'll have these new uh, district boundaries for another 10 years, and when the next census comes out and those results, then we'll uh, reevaluate how the district boundaries are and uh, make changes that so that's uh, It's been busy in the last uh, number of months since I've seen you guys. Uh, last time was especially busy. I felt just a little uh, tired. We passed our budget. Uh, there really wasn't anything. Uh, the council member globally called it a top ramen budget because with our continual budget deficit, structural deficit, we there's just not a lot to shift and move or do initiatives. It's pretty much um, the same as it was last year. So there wasn't there weren't too many crumbs to fight over. So it was actually pretty uh, boring <laughs> budget process just because there wasn't much to do. So uh, it is pretty much similar to what we had last year. Um, that the the city had been considering a levy good list to help with our um, budget deficit, but that was not on the plate for this year. So I'm hopeful that next year we can ask voters to increase our uh, our levy rates so we can have more money to provide better services to the community and have better staffing levels and um, just better uh, response to folks in, in the city. So that happened last night. So very exciting. Um, let's see, also what's come before council. Uh, since I saw you guys last was another round of budget allocations. So the federal government uh, put forth money to all of the states, counties, and cities in the United States, the American Rescue Plan Act dollars. And the city of Everett has about $20 million that was allocated to us. Uh, we've gone through three rounds of allocations, uh, totaling about $15 million of the $20 million. We still have another round we're probably going to be doing in January or so. With this last round, I wanted to share some of the um, the allocations that we approved. Um, uh, Two million dollars towards the daytime service access shelter pilot program to help with increasing daytime uh, shelter services for our unhoused population. Uh, Five hundred thousand dollars to repurpose a city building to help with. Um, over at the uh, Thornton A. Sullivan Park for case management offices. So in a previous allocation, we had uh, provided money to for staff people to provide uh, case management services to unhoused people. So those would be given actual physical space that they could provide those services. 
uh, increasing mental health support uh, about $1.4 million to pilot a program of vetting for mental health professionals for the fire department and at the public library to provide greater support to those who are unsheltered. Uh, we increased our human needs grants by $100,000. Um, and then there's going to be another round of other four grants. This was um, the initial allocation of $100 dollars million dollars toward effort forward grants. And it's really successful in the number of folks that have uh, more folks that have applied for grants than we have money for. So it's for small business in the area to help with capital improvements and uh, tree time improvements to uh, get more business in the door. So another round of that we should be coming live. Um, Hopefully by hopefully in January sometime. Uh twenty-five thousand dollars for a public safety gun buyback program. I don't have, I haven't heard the results, but yeah, it happened over the weekend. I would have uh every police department did a gun buyback program so folks who had unwanted guns, unneeded guns could bring them in exchange for a gift card. And there was um the gift cards ranged uh, in price depending on what type of gun was brought back and uh, as we kind of council meeting, the those guys then go off to be melted down, <laughs> so that they don't just like go into a back room. I think it'd be kind of cool. To uh, four hundred thousand dollars for a police property room move, so that uh, the police department of property rooms in the basement of a building on Colby and California, and the uh, the room itself is it's a basement, which isn't really an appropriate place to. Uh, so the, the drying room, whenever it rains, it gets puddled in the corners. It's not for a drying room. Um, refrigeration systems on the front all the time. So we're going to be moving that facility to the cold back building on Colby and uh, between Wall and Pacific. So the city building that's not being used right now. So we could move that and all the great staff there. But we'll have to work with those conditions in the door. Uh, $400,000 for fire training facility design. Uh, to help support uh, uh, to help support firefighters and train them in case there's a fire down at the port. Um, so that will be helpful. And right here, uh, additional funding for uh, more downtown and uh, restroom facilities. So there had been an initial allocation of 500,000 and then this allocation will uh, basically buy a couple more toilets downtown for around six toilets, uh, which I think will be uh, great for uh, public safety or for uh, public health and three hundred thousand dollars to for an urban forestry program to help support urban forest and tree restoration program. So that's kind of it. So those allocations uh, came through in late September, and so the uh, last round, one of my understanding is probably the last round will be in January. And uh, we um, so I'm sure Brock, I know Ralph will go over this later. The business improvement area is before council right now. I can't uh, necessarily talk too much about it uh, until the final vote happens, but um, the third and final reading will be this upcoming Wednesday and the third proposed vote at that time. So uh, with meeting that deadline, it's to go in place starting in January. And yeah, just I'm glad to be here today. I have a to just rely on love the space and just future tripping of what can happen and what uh, will will happen after life health comes here and just the process to get there. And I was glad to participate in the cleanup um, about a month ago. My timing, the timing is correct. And just yeah, really happy to uh, just see the continued progress and about it. Uh, so I'd ask any questions or feel the need to comment or questions for today. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks for covering the carpet use for the city. What what's the general um, status and sentiment around public safety for the current police force staffing? So the um, so with regards to ARPA, I don't think they're they're. What's the, can you share more about how you're saying with ARPA? I had two questions. One was. I wanted to hear how the ARPA dollars that you covered. Mm -hmm. The second was particularly with Eric Franklin's um, work around uh, bringing the public safety issue to the forefront mm -hmm. ways that we can work to actually solve some of these pretty sticky questions. One of them mm -hmm. was, and we have, I forget the name of the police chief or, <coughs> sorry, the second speech, 
theme park will develop their experience in certain areas in a second in a place like campus. Right. So I'm wondering what in the budget right. may have been specifically um, earmarked towards some of these public safety issues. Right. So as far as I'll start with staffing levels with the budget. Uh, so the uh, uh, sorry, the police, they, at the beginning of the year, they had almost 50 vacancies. But over the course of the year, they've done you know, a really amazing job of recruitment. And so their current vacancy rate is like 24. So they've made a huge improvement, but there's still a number of vacancies uh, with the police department. And so from a budget standpoint, um, it, we'd like to see those filled before we add two positions to the budget. So we did add one position to the budget for the specific program We may have seen in the uh, Herald and whatnot, the mayor has a uh, mayor business leader coalition uh, work that she's doing in final and C4 organization. And that work is going to be lobbying organizations to work on uh, the rest of the state, state legislature and problems that have happened after the unintended consequences of these late decisions. And so I think Jane is already seen a bill being drafted by Senator Robinson to address that. So Think they're going to be working on some other solutions. No, and thank you for that. Just because you know, if you can take campus health and some of the programs that we have, what we'll have in the facility with the Medical Station District Alliance, you know, first responders, particularly police, are a huge part of that. And mm -hmm. they have been unable to interact with somebody because we could be serving in addition to having more staffing issues during the pandemic. So that's just the context of the Great. Yeah, it's my understanding too that the um, so chase legislation is also going to be so all those at the state level definitely have to be back to the Well, thank you for all your work in the fourth <laughs> district. Absolutely. Um, I caught a little bit of the, your last day of the city meeting with the fentanyl drive. Yeah. Uh, what pretty so um, Everett downtown storage right by the railroad. Yes. All of that fun stuff. So. I can, whether or not it's fentanyl, I can test the drugs yeah. on a significant rise. Um, but the question I have for you is the underneath the truffle that uh, go over like Cuba Pacific and right. Broadway there, there's kind of a no name thing, for lack of a better term, where the railroads uh, do the railroads and the police do above the bridge, but uh, Underneath the bridge, up above the railroads, kind of right underneath there. I'm talking public works, all that stuff. If you're looking for a place for that five million remaining dollar to, to spend, to kind of figure out how to keep some of uh, people, we've got quite a few people that live underneath the bridge, kind of are up in that space, mm -hmm. causing a myriad of problems. Yeah, jurisdiction is always so funny and sticky. There's um, the uh, Railroad Trail near 128 is one of my day jobs at the county, and we have a lot of discussion about it. And there's like literally like 10 feet of the trail, like from the road, it's one jurisdiction, but the next to that's a different jurisdiction. So if somebody's here, it's one person's responsibility. If they're here, it's another person's responsibility. So yeah, it can definitely get murky pretty quick. But the, I want to give a little bit of context for the first comment about uh, fentanyl. So I was at a conference recently, and one of the uh, workshops was about uh, substance abuse disorders. And one of the panelists from um, Seattle yeah, County Public Health, and they shared with the so they shared that in 2015, Seattle uh, County Public Health reported five fentanyl overdose deaths, and this year they're on track to 600 fentanyl overdose deaths. So Keeping in mind that Galveston County is obviously a lot larger than Spanish County, but those numbers are reflective of what the working with the uh, city is dealing with and what the county is dealing with. So just that sharp spike is tough. So, in my day job, I work with the ARPA program and first responders. Right. Uh, one of the big things that has come up, I'm curious to know how I heard about it, is reallocation of unspent funds to the first round. Mm -hmm. uh, that has been a big talking point in a lot of areas that I work with. How did Eric do? What percentage do you know end up needing to be reality? Yeah, so I think um, 
So there's, so the county has, they went through two tranches. So you might be thinking about the unspent funds in their first 80 million for the city. We've gone through about four and allocations don't have to be finalized until 2024. So I'm not actually, I'd be happy to follow up on that to know and where, are, where are we at spending these dollars in the county department. Definitely don't want to leave any dollars on the table. <laughs> It's been an issue and something that needs to be nationwide. So it's not it's happening in a lot of places where funds were signified and dedicated to resource but but they are they had to be used. Right. And then if they were dedicated again, the next wants are but and then not spent within a two to four year period of on which category it was under mm -hmm. those have to be reallocated back and spent no later than 2026, otherwise they they would lose. It's something to keep track of. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you so much, Council Member. Um, we've been very fortunate that all of uh, your since you've been on Council, kind of here for a uh, while, as well as uh, so. Uh, so, next agenda. Um, I'm going to provide an update of the organization and of the, the neighborhood. If I can just be very quick, uh, hopefully, this back. Uh, let's get it So, real quickly, um, the Pallet Shelters project, which Ever Gospel Mission City moves on, has expanded from 20 shelters to 40 shelters. Um, and, we, you know, back when it was proposed, we were big supporters of the um, Sound Transit continues to plan the Evergreen extension. Um, we have been active over this past year about uh, addressing concerns that property owners and business owners may have. We have great movements of different alignments, um, as well as the advantages of different locations for transit and development. Um, and we proposed a what was the fifth option, an option X uh, that was uh, at the Pacific Avenue Bridge. Side of the tracks. And although not currently in the study, I think there's some expectation in the new year that we have that forward or something. Um, the city Ever Public Works, uh, Chris, Chris <laughs> Curtis has been designing a new um, bike head improvement from this Ever Station in the arena. Um, I am Told uh, by Christina, or Christina told uh, a tour that she was a part of, but I don't believe uh, that it will be a uh, half life experience from the station to uh, the arena. So that'll be fun to see. But nothing is public yet, so we'll see the illustrations of it. There's a couple other projects that may impact the trail. Um, and so very much looking forward to seeing the project looks so, like. I did give a, a help me to tour uh, with Puget Sound Regional Council or is online here. So thank you to PSRC to help having me as DA. Uh, leave that tour with regional uh, planners and folks who care about neighborhood development back in October. And we've held uh, free adopt the street cleanups around the station, um, a big chunk of Smith Avenue and Park and Google. Um, so those are the some of the bigger things up here uh, in terms of tangible projects. I'm going to provide a quick update on the convergence collaborative, and I've given this given a version of this presentation both at last meeting meeting at a semi annual meeting, and also to city council in October. Um, so what is a community collaborative for equitable development? Community collaborators for equitable development of place based work. Oh, oh, I'm walking into the room here. Um, our place based partnerships between elite community based organizations and government agencies, private sector institutions, and nonprofit social service and advocacy organizations. Um, the collaborative is a way for community and governments that co create and implement a shared vision, a shared decision making on key decisions such as community engagement, policy development, capital investments, and other strategic decisions. And our model for pulling this together came through uh, a comprehensive study that was done by Dub 
about other community collaborations across the country, about 17 that were funded by the Chase Foundation, as well as uh, uh, the best practices from policy game. Uh, uh, these other things listed here, Ken Rackens, Stanford Innovation. Um, we are fortunate to have this funded by Kaiser Permanente. So this past year, we've been focused on building up the collaborative and, and then starting to implement it in the years, the following years. So why are we calling it the Convergence Collaborative? Is that owing to our convergence of weather patterns? Um, our neighborhood is a convergence of transit, uh, gateway roadways, the paths in the future of our neighborhood. Um, the fact that we have a lot of industry-related commercial activities today, but in the future, lots of residents and other employees. Um, and we are convergence, the collaborative itself is a convergence of business, nonprofits, and public agencies. Each of the partners are co-owners in the convergence collaborative, although we lead it and act as the principal agent and staff it. Um, this is a partnership uh, and we're working together for shared, uh, in shared values and vision. Um, each organization and agency retains their own control of your strategic plans by becoming part of the collaborative. Uh, but the collaborative calls the line on this strategy. Um, our structure that we have set up this year um, includes a leadership advisory council, an equity committee uh, that helps inform the entire project, uh, and then specific work groups or committees that are working on implementation. So there's a social services nonprofit work group, which some of you are members of, a workforce development work group, and then uh, some work groups that we are using to acquire the housing and education issues. Um, so these, I'm gonna, they had a meeting, so I'll go over the next slide there, what they have prioritized. Um, but they're, what they are working on is informed by equity principles that were adopted as part of our convergence study that helped book uh, I got funding for back in 2020 to 2021. And then our equity committee has recommitted to, which is around centering community, designing for all people, uh, creating housing funds and affordability, providing affordable community transportation options, supporting a just and equitable economy, cultivating safe and healthy environments, promoting environmental justice, and preserving and sustaining equalized. Um, so the work groups have met. Um, the nonprofit social services work group we prioritized two and a half things. The first uh, was um, a health. And, this I'm going to go a little bit out, out of order uh, from the bullets here. The first was to develop a health and safety partnership between Comfort Health, the city's um, COIT, uh, community outreach and enforcement team. Uh, and the Power of Future EIA funded ambassador program of daytime ambassadors uh, that are observing what's happening in the street, able to connect people to uh, help or through the city. Um, the next priority was convergence of place. So, as part of the study back in 2021, we looked at uh, how to maximize the potential of the city's public properties within the neighborhood. Specifically, ever, uh, the Ever Transit is parking right in front of the station. And using that as a model for mixed use, mixed income development. So, in partnership with nonprofits, as well as the flow of community. Um, so, there, uh, the nonprofit social services worker prioritized uh, pursuing that project. Um, there's a number of steps that have to happen for it. Uh, but very much it, it's in alignment with their vision is in alignment with the study of having mixed use, mixed income, um, having ground floor retail that supports uh, businesses owned by people of color uh, to be able to provide pathways, uh, social economic pathways for communities, and having a gap community gathering space in the street. Uh, that's where the, the synopsis of that. The half uh, priority was continuing to explore new community development institutions and tools that would help further that project and other projects. Uh, 
Uh, so that's on the exploration side, not necessarily definitely have to go build those tools. Uh, and the large part is about building the relationship with existing institutions. So there's something called a community development financial institution, several of them in the state, it's a building relationships with them, as well as with the development of these communities that match up those two. Um, as well as figuring out what the right governance uh, structure would be in public community. It could be a public development authority uh, or partnering with the federal housing authority. Uh, so, figuring out what the right governance would be. Um, we had a work group development, uh, work group still do, um, and they have prioritized the creation of a workforce hub, which the concept is to partner with the existing programs at Everett Community College and at WCU Everett and our local businesses uh, to make sure that they are connected with one another so that there are internship, pre-apprenticeships, and apprenticeship uh, opportunities for our neighbors and businesses, as well as opportunities for people in the community to be able to get jobs and get internships and to pursue their careers. Um, I have three more bullets here, uh, and these will be involved with just, just kind of general collaborative as well as with our local environment groups. So, Continue to activate the neighborhood. There's a Wednesday farmers market at, that exists and activate the neighborhood. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of big ideas with this project. And so, we want to engage the community and the stakeholders of this project. Um, we have, we'll have a, a continued focus on housing issues as well as street issues as well. And finally, um, we do want this to be a partnership. So the way that an organization or a business or an individual um, becomes a partner is to agree to the vision and value. Now, each partner is going to have different responsibilities. Right? So some will be very much involved in the workforce club, uh, every two other, every community college, or every greater local government. So we might end up having a memorandum of agreement. But being a partner means you agree to the vision values for the impact. So if you are interested in uh, being officially considered a partner with the collaborative, um, we'll connect afterwards and I will send you this essentially two page uh, organizational letter of agreement. And with that, I'm at the conclusion of the update for the district. Hello, so still kind of a question, a question for, for Brock, and let me clarify that basically the collaborative is a community development initiative with its own cost center, separate from the business improvement area, which is a service program in the neighborhood with its own cost center. So we're building an organization that has capacity in both service delivery and in community development. And so hopefully that came through. Uh, but if you have questions about how this is structured, the five or and in the and elements in the org chart have about 40 people working in those five different domains already. And so as we move forward into implementation, we're going to want to engage others in the neighborhood uh, to participate in building this collaborative with a 15 year high on light rail arriving ideally in 2037 and so what do we want to do together to develop this neighborhood in a way that really takes advantage of the uh, envisioned um, public transportation system and city of Everett's uh, vision and zoning for residential development in the neighborhood and the general city and ESDA commitment to support economic development and the, the economy of businesses in the neighborhood. So there's a lot going on here, residential transportation uh, industry, uh, and we're, we're trying to build an apparatus that can help us over 15 years of dramatic development that's gonna take place in this neighborhood. So let's open it up for either online. I don't know if people online can uh, hold a hand up. 
uh, if you do that, that's why I say online participation as well as any questions or comments from those in the room. If it's fuzzy, say so, and we'll see if we can add clarity. Billy. I'm just quick, I think I didn't mention the farm part. What? That is not held within the boundaries of the PIA, right? So is that a separate deal? Yeah, so uh, the organizers of the downtown uh, farmers market before the pandemic held Wednesday conference on 32nd Street, so just down the street. Uh, and so that's every Wednesday afternoon slash evening. Um, so they are looking to bring it back uh, this coming summer. Pretty excited to get back. Okay. So you're talking about just the next day on the weekend when that's just all the wall. Yep. yep. So it's in tandem with 32nd Street from the train station to McDougal at Flock there, which we have proposed become a plaza. And it would be populated with a whole variety of events in the course of the year, one of which. Uh, could well be a public uh, the of the uh, the market. It's a little bit big picture. That's longer term uh, as part of it. I think the farmers market is just like a really good example of the public space. Any other questions online? I can. I am looking at the participant list on the on the Zoom. So if you're I'm sorry. Oh, yes, council member. Uh, I always wanted to be really good. I just wanted to put that one because, um, you know, it's totally not people. I thought it'd be really cute to call farmers market indoors at that green and white building on 32nd in the Google and just transforming that into like the depot or something and roll over. Yeah. That's an idea. <laughs> um, I think Ed's a very good fan of that idea. Uh, we looked at it when we were doing the study. We incorporated uh, part of the study was um, do we preserve it there? Do we max, like, what is the best use of that property? Um, but certainly one of the ideas is what is repurposing that property, repurposing the building itself. Who owns that? That building is owned by Howie Barbary. Okay, it's called the Depot. It's uh, uh, he, he's uh, there's been discussions about acquiring that property for development as a part of this master plan that hasn't moved forward, but he has indicated in the past, just a few years ago now. That he would donate the building if somebody wanted to move it. So there's a, there's a variety of ideas here, and uh, we don't have an actual plan in place along those lines, but a good idea. And I, I appreciate your supporting that concept. I didn't even know it was on the depot. <laughs> it actually is uh, the original depot from 1911 of the Milwaukee Railroad. And it was both a passenger and freight people from the 1911 to into the 1930s. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's still railway right away. And uh, in between Everett Trains' property and the And I've also had gone through the other blocks just to the side. Um, with that, I think we're going to go to the next, well, partial agenda item uh, to get an update on the finances of the organization. And, and Ty, I think you're ready to go with this. Um, so, let me see that. So, here, uh, Ty's going to go over our profit and loss statement with a comparison of our budget as, a, as um, we did a budget amendment in October. Um, so this is reflecting that budget amendment um, with our year-to-date actions. And 
So Ty, feel free to come off mute and um, give a highlights of the, the statement. Yeah, so to really understand this uh, statement, you really need to look at the key, what's the, uh, the key P grant. So under the total income up at the top under income, just under that line, there's a key P grant from November, 2021. And at the bottom, there's a net including key P grant. So the key P grant is a grant from Kaiser Permanente for $95,000. Uh, for the convergence collaborative work. And so uh, um, because it was a 2021 grant, we don't reflect it in our grants and income for the 2022 year. So that's why um, it's reflected this way. It just makes a lot more sense to point that out in the beginning. So I think the big story here is, you know, um, we did pretty well uh, in terms of the total income if we include the KP grant and that we've gotten a lot done, as you can tell from Grant's uh, presentation before. And uh, our operating expenses are basically in line. Our personnel costs are right on track with where we're expecting to be. And professional services, um, we still have some money to expend this year, and we'll be going back to Kaiser Permanente to ask them to uh, allow us to continue expending the grant through the beginning of next year. But otherwise, we are doing pretty well and uh, we'll still have a net surplus to carry over into next year. Thanks, Doc. Any questions about that? Yeah, all right. Thank you, Doc. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we're done with the state of the district, state of the ESDA, state of the finances. And so we're going to look at the budget for 2023. Okay, so this is very much in draft. And um, the board has been going through strategic planning in, the, in November, and we'll be going through it again in December. And we're waiting also on the verdict on our BIA, which uh, will be voted on next Wednesday. And so we're very much in the draft budget at this point. Um, and I've simplified uh, some of the, the columns of where we have restricted dollars coming from the BIA and the, uh, the next versus going forward. Um, but we're looking to, I think one takeaway is looking to uh, align the money to staff to uh, have more positions to be able to manage this workload with convergence collaborative and with the BIA. Um, I think we will probably alter these numbers with the board uh, a bit to be able to work them to make sure that they make sense. Um, we, uh, if the BIA goes through, uh, the day ambassador program and the night patrol will be contracted for this is not a staff. Uh, and then I've broken program expenses into some categories uh, here. Uh, so there will be specific expenses tied to PIA and as well as to the conversion plan uh, if we continue to see product. Um, and then interact off. We currently do not have an office. Um, I, uh, with my other job, I have to do this job in that same location. Um, and so we currently do not. Revenue, uh, if the BIA goes through, the revenue is projected to be $350,500. Um, grants, we are, uh, we have 50,000 committed from one source and we're looking for the remainder of the 150,000 to the business uh, one day that. And then total additional funding, funding is about uh, $21,500 mostly through memberships and a significant portion of that membership is our fault agencies to contribute to um, this has not been approved and so the board will be taking this and if the, if the membership has input into the budget certainly to uh or questions about the proposal uh certainly this would get up to the voice of the uh, comments or concerns, and then we can take them up with the board. 
fee. So our purpose here is to keep you informed on the finance of the organization and invite any questions or comments or suggestions you may have, knowing that this is a work in progress and will be finalized by the board of directors as we go forward. So does anybody have any questions you'd like to ask at this time? Can you scroll up a little bit if I can give you that projected total revenue? Uh, like this thing, 530,000. Yeah, I, I, I this so far. So it's a balanced budget approach, and the uh, sources are identified uh, to match up with the costs that are projected. This is a quick question. Your trash bin for your body rules. We so first uh, any decision around that particular line item we go through the ratepayer improvement board for determining what we actually want to spend the money on. Uh, one of the concepts in putting together the proposal would be to purchase all the trash bins, uh, since we do have a fair amount of litter. If that happens. The idea would be if we had more public trash bins, there would be less litter. Uh, but we would take that over the ratepayer board as well as with the city. I have to do somebody that has a portable trash can for your purchase to the city basement that probably would look really well distributed to the district. Uh, that sounds lovely. Which is great. Let me yeah. Right. With that, we have no more questions. I get to talk more, which is I'm sure exciting. <laughs> yeah, we're going to move on to the presentation on the business and improvement area. So I'm going to provide an overview for, uh, of the proposal, once again, for those of you who have not been engaged uh, or who just still have questions. And then I'm going to hand it over to Ed, who's going to talk about a proposed implementation plan. Um, so uh, three key talking points or things that I want you to, to think about as we go through all of this first. Uh, this proposal has been focused on the critical needs identified through Surveys where property owners and not uh, really focusing on the most critical. Second is that we right size the boundaries uh, to where we have the strongest support. And the reason was we got uh, direction from City Council in 2019 that's the way we should go, and we got direction from our property, so that's the way we should go. And so our boundaries. Aren't necessarily with the entire neighborhood, but they're focused just on the center of the one. And finally, this is a place to start to grow. Um, and there may be some property owners concerned that we would use provision within the RCW that we incrementally increase it year to year. That is not the intent here. The intent is to prove the effectiveness. And when a property owner wants to be added in, we would add in. Uh, and then we would have a reassessment after five years uh, when this comes back up to city council about what the appropriate boundaries would be. Uh, so just to, to recap of the process of how we got here, uh, in 2019, 2020, we went through a very thorough process. Uh, we, with funding from the city, uh, consultant was hired, BDS Consulting, who's an expert in business uh, improvement areas, helped us craft a proposal. Um, there was a seven out city council vote to create one, but there was a, a amendment to the borders, to the boundaries of the neighborhood, which required an additional 15 day notice. And that put us into the new year, at which point we needed to start collecting. Um, affidavits reconfirming support for the BIA. Uh, we have done that and we're about to come back to council in about April. Um, we haven't in March to come back to the um, But the pandemic obviously hit in 2020. And so we put that hold due to the economic uh, uncertainty. 2021, uh, the board extensively discussed at every board meeting of the BIA. Like in the fall, we got an online survey of private property owners to get more input, and then the BSA board approved the draft proposal, which we presented at the last meeting, uh, which we then put out to 
I probably would have missed last spring and summer um, to uh, see if they supported it. And if they did, they signed a petition. Um, but I think that's all clear. Yeah. And I'm also blocking. Hi, Shayla. Uh, we're not quite ready for your agenda. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, in 2022, this year, we've been doing that outreach. We got 60% support as of uh, June, so we submitted to Town Hall. And now it is before Town Hall with a uh, potential vote next Wednesday uh, in public hearing. So to start, these are the boundaries of the BIA. There's four discrete areas. Uh, each could be their own BIA. Um, Combined, but we want to really be able to generate that revenue to provide services to any of the particular BIAs. And so uh, we're uh, providing services to all four. Can I hear something? All right. Those are the four areas. Um, we're going to go over the programming real quick. Uh, so our safe and clean program, which is about two thirds of the budget, um, is focused more than it's uh, seventy four percent of the budget. Uh, it's focused on nighttime security controls. Um, in, in starting to do initial bids, it's probably hourly drive throughs through the neighborhood. Uh, at this point, uh, every seven days a week, daytime neighborhood safety ambassadors. So five days a week, we would have people on the ground uh, during the day uh, being able to help people in need, uh, connecting them to social services. And when there's a, a safety issue being the first few contact police. Additionally, there is some funding for major spot cleanup efforts and some discipline program efforts. These are things we don't have to purchase and just uh, use. But. So that's the safety and clean program. Related to it is a parking program. Uh, back in 2019, when we started putting this together, we found out that there's a lot of right of way next to businesses that the businesses themselves are responsible for parking uh, because it's funding through the right. And that creates a lot of inconsistency in signage and therefore a lot of uh, bad parking behavior, uh, at least according to the businesses. And so this proposal would provide an option that uh, businesses or property owners could opt into of having a uniform signage requirement and that our daytime safety ambassadors get a call to enforce um, that uh, program. It couldn't be, we would still have to rely on business to call the towing company or something like that, but we would have the uniform picture. Some of the funding here uh, would be used for the daytime ambassadors to do that. Um, and then we have an enhancement program, uh, neighborhood enhancement program, uh, that was from a survey. It's very much important to bring back the farm department. He's a, a orange bar there without a lot of home related to other companies that are here to take the sporting other events. And then um, some additional physical information. So in total, our budget here, 73% uh, for the safety and program, $230,000. 5% uh, for parking, 6% for the neighborhood enhancement program, 5% uh, for the promotion and communications program, uh, which is, uh, we have uh, online business directory and the things that are managing. And then, um, Accounting and management is a little under 10 percent. And so that would pay for my uh, my time, uh, potentially some of the staff time uh, related to managing the program uh, if we get another staff member, um, as well as increased accounting costs and collection costs that relate to the The rates. In general, for almost everyone, it is uh, 50 cents per thousand dollars of land value plus four cents per square foot. Uh, I have a comparison table on the screen here in the upper right. 
that shows the rates for other BIA downtown and other is 14 cents per square foot plus nine cents per thousand dollars. Um, ours is balanced to try to get close to 50% of the revenue from the square footage, 50%. The equation on the left doesn't match up with the Fifty cents per thousand dollars assessed. Oh, you're right. You're right. I have, I have the column right. So which one's the correct one? Left or right? Left is correct. Yeah. Thank you, Mitch. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and so the columns on the yeah. Okay. Uh, and there is one difference. We have two hotels in the neighborhood, um, and uh, the instead of land uh, value, it would be the building square footage itself that would be used at it. So it's a six cents per gross square foot. Um, these are, uh, just real quick, these are based off of 2022 values. They will always be 2022 values um, up until we have to redo it. And it gets increased per year on an inflation factor of TPI uh, up to 5%, it's cap at 5%. So um, 2023 dollars would have an inflation factor applied to it because we, we started collecting the shifts as a figure start in 2023. And so the inflation factor would be applied to it. Okay, accountability. Uh, it is starting small, it's right size with the idea that we prove uh, the effectiveness of it. It requires a minimal after five years. So, this isn't uh, a given that this continues forever. Um, there will be a ratepayer board uh, that's approved by the city, comprised of only property owners who are ratepayers. Um, and it, uh, by the ordinance, must represent the diversity of land uses and sizes of the neighborhood. They'll meet quarterly. The budget, likewise, is small and right size to prove to allow us to first prove effectiveness before or if it would ever grow. Um, and the budget must be approved annually by the rate payer board, the rate payers at the annual meeting. Um, there will be performance targets built for each of the program areas. So I'm going to hand this over to Ed, but again, the Public hearing is next Wednesday, 6 30 p.m. We would love your support to be there. Um, there will be an interim rate in the advisory board for those of you who are property owners. We are recruiting people. We will be recruiting people to serve on that interim rate period advisory board. Within two or three months, we'll have to get it permanent. So we'll be back through the city process to make it a permanent board. Um, and then uh, we will be focused on launching the BIA. So you have a document in front of you that was drafted for you to have a reference back in your organization and for any conversations you want to have with others in your organization or that are in the BIA area. And again, my the focus of this document is to position volunteers to serve on the radio. And we're going to need to um, uh, recruit those, uh, the interim workers with the uh, partnership of the mayor and the city council uh, very quickly because uh, this goes, would go, this approved next week, would go into effect and notices will start going out to property work at that time. And we need to be organized uh, with clarity by April 1 when we would envision services began to be delivered in the neighborhood. So I'm just going to walk you through this and then uh, answer any questions so that um, you've got something tangible for your reference that you have conversations about this. The first section is a, it's a summary of the history evolution of this, which Bob Rock that have provided uh, in his presentation. Uh, 2023 startup program management will be through the Ever Station District Alliance. And as I said, this is a separate cost center uh, parallel with the rest of the work the organization is doing, uh, in which there's a, an accounting accountability 
for the dollars uh, for services provided by property owners uh, that will be managed by the state district client and, and, and uh, decision making will be in collaboration with the board of directors and the rate payer board. Rate payer board uh, will be an interim board. We need to find a number of individuals who would be helpful in uh, developing bylaws, developing measure uh, uh, measurements, a uh, reporting system uh, for operating uh, the BIA during the um, during the year. So we hope that a good quality group of people will come together to be that interim great peer board and help us uh, launch it. Um, with the idea that they can either volunteer to stay on that board or help us recruit uh, other individuals for it. The uh, percentages of the funding, as the crop summarized, are provided for you there. Um, I'm David. Yes, uh, January 1, the implementation, April 1, uh, service delivery. Uh, the timing between will be focused on a, a lot of work around um, forming the rate care board and its mandate and its operating protocols and other work related to uh, readiness to start a service program. So there is a, a, a contract plan for safety control. These will be nighttime patrols and daytime patrol, patrols uh, with a, a specific hour, uh, nightly and daily reports on in safety incidents that occur in the neighborhood, uh, and um, monthly reports summarizing the activity month by month. Uh, there will be a neighborhood uh, a litter cleanup plan that will be a part of the BIA. Uh, elements are identified there. There will be uh, a neighborhood development planning process that will go on with some improvements that uh, we think have uh, value. Um, that will be funded through the BIA. And uh, the anticipated budget is approximately $300,000. There's um, a budget of that that has been formulated and is embedded in the ordinance. Uh, the, to be considered the uh, essentially the improvements in the neighborhood will not be incorporated in the fee structure for five years based on 2022 rates. The, the amount will be fixed with the annual adjustment of the, uh, the, the CPI so that there will be basically an inflation proof to this original budget. Uh, that will be available for the rate payer board to, to, to help us manage the percentages that the Brock uh, shared on the, on the slide is there for your um, free call. Uh, we, uh, the work plan during that first quarter is to uh, line up with our professional uh, uh, accounting firm, Kristen. Larson and Allen, which is a national company that manages the uh, uh, business accounting uh, that will line up a separate accounting process for the BIA money from the other ESBA money. Uh, there's already been a start, a start on the, uh, looking at potential contractors. That needs to be completed. Uh, the uh, requirements for bidding on, on this contract uh, are laid out uh, in general terms. This will be formalized with the Red Hair Board. Uh, our executive director will oversee the BIA oper operations and as ESPA adopts its budget here in the next uh, a few weeks, there will be additional staffing that will support the executive director in the performance of those of those functions. So any questions? This is uh, there's a lot happening here in the next 90 days, assuming city council approves the BIA. 
Anybody online have any questions? Doesn't look like it. So uh, I am hoping that this will be a valuable tool for you to, to answer questions. A lot of complexity to this uh, operation and, and startup. So um, this was provided to you for the latest understanding of where we are and what we're going to be up to in the next uh, three or four months. At this point, then we can move on. And yeah, I think the next thing that we want to do is uh, learn about urban art. We have a plan that's happening in the neighborhood. Brock's going to bring us up to speed on what the overall plan is, and then you're going to get to meet one of the artists that is uh, uh, has a piece of art uh, planned for our neighborhood, and it's an example of what four different artists are going to be able to offer. Brock, yes. Okay, in the transition, I'm just going to reiterate if you can come next uh, Wednesday to the public hearing, please do. Uh, we we'll love your support at the public period, VA, or at least if you want to come to uh, let them know. Um, is the uh, front end or back end of the agenda? Or the Ours has been the very last item. So, well, I think you want to come. Uh, there's two opportunities to get public comments. You can do it at the beginning during the general public comment, or you can wait until the item is discussed and get public comment on the year. And if you wanted to provide a written comment, you can all the But if there's a meeting for the end, uh, it'll, it'll be. In, in, I haven't seen the agenda yet. I'll be um, at the usual beginning of the meeting. Part of the meeting is on the grant funding. Here we have the consent agenda. Then it'll be the other topic. So it'll be probably about 20 minutes in. Well, you have third readings on a whole series of items for that meeting. So would it be correct to project and we and the SBA has been the last of those I think uh, four different items that uh, have hearings and and uh third and final readings. Yeah. So likely to be a long meeting and likely for us to be at the tail end of that. Um I think of the third reading I don't see the need for two sections on works design project. Last night, um, I think it'll be tedious to go through all reading a lot of time. It's really from when I saw the Forest Street project. Really, really exciting. So, you can uh, also you can attend in person you can, and test. At the beginning and the end, and you can also attend them online as well. Uh, if you do that, I do request you to turn on the camera so you have all the questions. Yeah, you need to email our second and half hour before the meeting. So the meeting starts at 6 30 to meet if you want to testify live online. You have to get approval for that before six o'clock. Okay, so on to the fun part of the agenda. Yep, she was there. Fantastic. Um, so last the fall of 2021, we were awarded a Ford Everett grant to um, have four murals painted in our neighborhood. It's pretty exciting. One of which was to paint the other side of the Pacific Avenue Bridge over uh, Smith and King Street. Uh, and so we have uh, selected our four lights. We've gone through the whole process and selected the four lights. So we're excited to show you a little bit of the work. Uh, the one on the left here is uh, the one for the 
the overpass um, over cement. Uh, and uh, the artist John's bikes. Hold up the bridge, which I think will be a lot of fun. Uh, but a more interesting experience there for people walking to stations in the county. Uh, hopefully, the heat is preferred to be by the way. The second is Debbie Martin Jones. Um, her work at this via standard mill um, really focuses on the lives of the families. And then third <laughs> is Rosemary Johnson. Effort residents are getting work to this year's historic culture. A lot of the reminders are probably following the team. Um, it doesn't always exactly like it, but it's a good track of it. We are hoping that our first work will be posted to Sean's work to get a little bit of fun feeling with all of that. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand over to Shayla. Uh, uh, so she, Shayla, can you come up here? There you go. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, it's great. Okay, awesome. Um, first of all, um, thanks, you know, thanks for having me. Um, looks like the screen's pretty big over there so hopefully you could see all the details but um i've just a note i've added um some details um since then and some textures here but um you know originally um i'm i'm an artist from um seattle i was raised over in beacon hill and i was really excited to um get be selected and be on this project. So thank you. Um, I did work at Boeing for about six, uh, a little over six years. And I worked, I happened to work in Everett um, for one year over at the, the factory office. And so um, uh, I love the idea when uh, Brock came to us and uh, this mural just represents really um, people just from different cultures and, um, you know, Brock explained how um, you're trying to show um, the history of Everett and also the future of what's coming to the city. And so you could see in here, I tried to display and illustrate, um, you know, some old and some new of what's what's been and what's changing. So, um, for example, um, we have the White Horse Mountain Mount Bull in the three fingers in the background, um, just trying to bring some color with the sunshine, um, really bright and bold in your face um, to really brighten up the space around that crown building where this mural is going to be. Um, and, you know, this is about a, a little over 22 feet long building, or I mean, sorry, mural signage uh, by over 10 feet tall. Um, so I put the people, you know, in the forefront of this, but surrounding them um, also in this version here, um, you'll see in the newer version when it's final, um, I've also added like the Everett station um, in the background, um, in the center there, uh, there's the uh, historic Everett Theater. On the far right, we have the Rucker Mansion. Um, we have, you know, some of the older uh, trains and then also showing, um, you know, the sound transit that comes through. And so um, just really trying to get, you know, a really diverse mix of different people and cultures. So, um, you know, some of you may recognize some of these people here. Some of them are real. Some of them are made up, uh, which I think is really fun about this is. Um, Is, uh, we're honoring Chief Pat Patkinim um, from the Snohomish tribe. Um, he's front and center with the brown coat on and the hat. And um, there's a few others in there. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you also have um, the history of there's a well back ship coming through from the left, and you could see it carrying some logs to uh, represent, uh, you know, a lot of the city production mills that brought a lot of jobs um, to the city um, in the past and still, you know, exists. Um, still exists now. So there's a flower bed on the bottom left corner, trying to make it really colorful. That represents, you know, the Evergreen Arbitorium. 
um, and gardens. And um, you could see there's some modern um, housing and apartment complexes in the background. There are also some, some of the women that are wearing um, some Native American tribal outfits. So um, I did some research on that and talked to a few of, a few friends. So some of this is, is very real and also designed by some Native American artists as well, um, as far as the clothing design. And so you see this little boy, I'm calling him Bubble Boy. <laughs> He's pointing up um, into the sky, into the bubbles. That's kind of making this, uh, you know, this feel of a fun, family-friendly place. Um, so trying to show that, you know, this neighborhood in Everett is going from industrial and going to incorporate and be more, you know, family-friendly. Um, we're wanting to see more people move into the city in the future. And so this is really a place, you know, to say, hey, this is going to be home and this is your home. Um, so the bubbles kind of float up into the sky. You see a Boeing uh, 777 flying um, over on the right hand side into the view. Um, you know, everyone knows uh, Boeing played a lot of um, you know, space in, in the jobs and industrial there. So um, yeah, in the background, you just got your your water, your grass, um, blending nature with people. And so um, a lot more history um, that I could talk about here, but really um, just wanted to share some of that. And if you're wondering about the elephant, um, I don't know if any of you know, but um, in doing some research, there was uh, Rosie the elephant that they, they I saw that they had um, read about a zoo and she was named as Rosie and um, you know she was an icon that's over in uh, let's see here um, Flint Ping Homage the Forest Park so um, if you've been to the park there she has a big sculpture over there so I thought that was um, you know could be neat to incorporate so animals people nature um, you know products um, trying to tie everything together. And then um, with your subtle nod to Ever the words Everett Station District in the flag. Um, and those letters are made up of like cross hatchings and different designs, railroad tracks that make up the letters. So um, if you can imagine, you know, that flag will actually be fairly large once it's um, up on the wall. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's that's what I've designed, and um, you know, in the the final, you'll see a lot more texture, and you know, might even be a couple more people in there. So um, yeah, thank you so much, and you know, happy to answer any questions. Yeah, this was really great. I'm wondering if um, anybody here has questions for. Oh, there is a question about where the glacier uh, or the crown, the crown distribution building, but it's uh, not the original one, the original, it's the, the brown, the very large brown on the top of the east side of the building, between 33rd and 37th. I'll probably have to do that. Yeah, well, there, uh, this will be printed to print. So. Um, on the others, the city, I will have to figure out what this particular one, um, but for those that are being painted, the city is paying for a third coat to go on. Is there any type of painting code that you can see? Uh, Okay, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, you're today. welcome. You. All right. Thank you all. Um, thanks for having me and um, letting me share some of the art with you today. So have a great day, everyone. Okay, so we're on to the last agenda for today, uh, which is uh, strategic planning for the organization. So as we've gone through the budget and the BIA discussion, the purchase classes, there's some big changes for the organization hopefully coming up. And um, we want to take a, a moment to get the input from our membership uh, into that strategic planning process. So the last four meetings, the board spent a significant amount of time, but not enough time in thinking through the next five years of the organization. And we will continue that at next week's board meeting. 
potentially uh, into a board of three in January. Uh, to inform the board, we would love to have your input today into some of the, the thoughts of uh, the our neighborhood as it is, our organization, and some draft concepts for the board of uh, I do have a survey. So we'll have a discussion in the room uh, around each question. But for those of you online, you can probably participate uh, by speaking to uh, our code off and talking to us. But we'll have a survey that we can all participate in. If you have a smartphone, um, or if you're online, you'll be able to go to a, a URL to, uh, to start. I'm going to go over our mission, vision, and values, and then we will. Uh, start. So first, standing up for the people online, obviously. Um, our mission is to bring together businesses, property owners, residents, and other stakeholders to create to solve problems and change and change and temporary issues to people and foster better solutions in this neighborhood. We're not looking to change our mission or vision in this process. We have just gone through the last two years and adopted a few years. Our vision is that the neighborhood is that our city neighborhood will be the final economic region, major regional transit hub, a home for industry and residents, a great place to live, work, and play, and a model for how natural systems can flourish and support human wealth. We is just last year and I need to be about this. Um, I'm not going to read out all of the values on your screen here. Uh, I'll highlight the first word here. Our values are community, collaboration, industry, community, growth, two-star, environment, and transparency. Um, any thoughts on our mission vision values? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I do see that there's a Right now, I need your participation. You have it. You can go to bit.ly slash capital EMBA underscore block the block analysis. It's the first part of it. Uh, that'd be great. So you, if you're in the room and you don't have time, to do so. Yeah. Right. I need to reshare the screen for this here. So the first question is simply, what is our neighborhood's greatest strength and asset or asset? And I'm only giving you one choice here. If the options don't fit your choice, which that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, you can write in your own. <laughs> uh, and then if you could also go ahead with the second question, and then we'll we'll take input and discuss. Uh, which is the second question is what is their entrance rate sweetness? Uh, again, I have some self-populated options, but uh, certainly the list is probably longer than three uh, of things you might want to consider. So again, we can put it in. No, we just go to the next screen. You can keep going, but let's just stop here. Yeah. And hopefully I got more URLs to work out. We can later, yeah. But I do want to take a moment here. Everybody in the room good? So I, I did actually kind of wait the 
I, I had to fill this out once to make sure that it worked. Um, so we have so far about actually five responses. So I've set six. Yeah, but um, a third of you say the location of the greatest strength. A third of you say the opportunity for growth is the greatest strength. And then you have know, one for transit, the transit station, the transit. It could be a, a number of things here. Um, two people have jumped up to identify the three certain assets. And then one person saying industry and related to our goal. This is this. Uh, obviously, this is not an entire thing for everyone, but gives us some stuff in the room. Um, any thoughts on? Additions people want to talk about in terms of strengths of the neighborhood. I think the potential of uh, addressing some of the housing needs that are in crisis situation in, in our community is um, a big opportunity. That'd be a good one to have. All right. So the next. Question here was uh, what's our increased weakness? Um, we have uh, most people saying safety, uh, and a few people saying unsafe roads, the roads themselves being unsafe to walk by a drive. Uh, <laughs> Roadway specific are pretty big, but they're both on safety and then different approaches for how to solve these things. But yeah. any additional thoughts on? Uh, weaknesses of the neighborhood. More bike path. More bike bike path. Yeah. Okay. So I think additional strength oh, is that uh, is that the, or, the neighborhood is becoming more organized and relationships are forming thanks to relation thanks to organizations like ESDA. I think actually that's really big. I love to hear that time. Perfect. Spoken like a true board member. <laughs> um, okay, if you would go to the next uh, series of questions. Um, so there's three on this page. Uh, first is, what is the neighborhood's greatest opportunity? And then our neighborhood's greatest threat. Uh, I have pre-populated again <laughs> uh, answers, but you can fill in your own. Um, and I added another field just in case you have additional things you might have uh, here. And But this slide straight away the weakness is up again. You don't have to fill out that third question. You feel like they're yeah. <laughs> We'll take another minute or so. Oh, I think everybody, everybody filled it out last time. <laughs> um, so our, our responses on, oh, eight responses, great. On greatest opportunity, <clears throat> uh, number one here was the light rail and transit redevelopment. That's number one for two. Number two was growth of industry and related commercial activities. Uh, and then we had maybe one vote each for redeveloping city owned lands, like the parking rights and the public works site, um, and building partnerships between businesses and workforces. On the second question, um, most people indicated that public safety issues are a threat to our neighborhood. Uh, 
Uh, we do have just kind of the general apathy or stagnation by the city to, re for example, to redevelop properties or to take more actions with uh, potential for, for hindrance. Any any thoughts? <laughs> Board members who think about this all the time. Well, climate action uh, can visit the neighborhood without very good green spaces, um, park capacity, um, we would have big emissions, get out emissions. Uh, Quantity in this neighborhood. Um, so, <laughs> okay, it's got my throat. <laughs> but an action plan for it. It's an important agenda for this particular neighborhood. I agree. All right, uh, on to the third page here, uh, the next uh, portion. So, if you click the link. To go to the next one, um, which will ask uh, what issues you'd like ESTA to focus most on. We're not doing a spot analysis of the, of the organization today. We're just going to look at uh, what issues we should prioritize. So, on this list includes public safety, connecting people in need with social services, ensuring. I should before you start to click and hit next. Like uh, on this, uh, unlike the last ones. <clears throat> Yeah, I think this is the third one. Yeah, we only have two. Yeah. And then I got a response that says your response has been reported. Yes, that's right. Last one, Bummer. Um, well, what I'm going to do for those who are um, online, if you're having troubles with this, I'm going to send you everyone online through the chat a link to this survey so you can pull it up. And um, so those in Zoom, you should have the link to fill it out. For those in the room, I'm going to quickly create a bit late for you. Okay, so if you go to bit.ly slash capital letters ESDA underscore squat uh, underscore uh, should be five. Well, three should work, uh, but if it doesn't, try five. Okay. They should both work. <laughs> so select more than one. You can select more than one if you wish. Yep. Sorry for the technical challenge there. We're going to be ahead of schedule, folks. Good, good, good. Good job. Bunch of bars for me. 
Yeah, let me go with this, and then if anybody else comes in, I think uh, alter just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so number one, in terms of focus, and responses to public safety. Number two, with promoting businesses. Five for three is ensuring uh, the city uh, plans for the neighborhood to grow gracefully into an equitable, sustainable community that balances residential and job growth needs with that leads to businesses. And then tied with that with hosting public events and supporting the summer farm. Uh, so those are the problems that go down with it there. Finally, this one is quick and easy. Uh, requires me to explain things maybe a little bit more. It's gonna be really hard for you, those of you to see on in the room. And if you go to, for those in the room, if you go to bit.ly underscore squat underscore four, which hopefully worked off of that last um, screen, should be able to go to sell. Now, I wrote this in preparation for the board meeting last time. And so we're just starting to discuss it as a board in terms of top three priorities. Uh, being first, enhancing safety of the neighborhood with their nighttime patrols and daytime bathrooms mm -hmm. as outlined in BIA uh, priorities. Number two is building partnerships for equitable community development. This really encompasses all the work we're doing with the Curtis Collaborative um, of building those partnerships with our nonprofits or businesses to uh, develop. Uh, the convergent place concept, the health and safety initiative, the workforce hub, um, planning, you know, building relationships for additional community development tools and institutions. Uh, all about partnerships for making business. Finally, it says here just establish organizational excellence. But that's everything from uh, having a full time executive director, having staffing to run these programs. Uh, making sure that our accounting systems are robust and accurate, and uh, you know, we're humming as an organization the ways of things. And so, uh, in our uh, kind of graph here of priorities, uh, we could kind of describe that a bit more. I think that is the best what the third priority is trying to get at, which is all around staffing. Funding, accounting, uh, performance. And certainly, uh, yeah, we love your additional feedback into these priorities. Uh, and these are just the initial draft, and the board has to really start to understand. Uh, So I think everybody kind of saw where we were three. lots of uh, three people very supportive, one kind of neutral on it, and one leading support. So probably one additional words than I think. Um, or one additional topic. So why don't we open it up? Uh, kind of what are your thoughts here in the room or online with those three characters? Uh, then yeah, in, in regards to like uh, public safety and and some of the other ideas for the neighborhood, like I just talked about, like climate plan and stuff. I'm excited to, uh, I think it'd be a good opportunity to showcase the city of Everett with the, the that security force and you know, be a, an unarmed, you know, first, first line of, it could be, can showcase the city that it could be, uh, you know, like, a, like an unarmed, like security force could be 
get access to, to work on public safety and uh, create more pleasant way of interacting with people and devices that get them the help that they need. Because I haven't seen like the city's been you know moving in a direction of more like, adding social workers like fire, fire department, police department and stuff. So we, we can keep we can be moving in that direction. Show how these different kinds of public safety initiatives can work. Yeah. Um, along those lines, but slightly different than the time before. Uh, and that's because I think in that public, clearly there's a need for public safety, right? Clearly. And so I think also there needs to be, I, I'm all for the, the contracted armed services, but I, just, I, I get the sense that there needs to be a lot more clear alignment and partnership with the and other first responders because there are real critical issues in, in the neighborhood that require our response. And, uh, and I think that I think that for that particular part of this to be successful, I mean, there, there needs to be a really well understood, clear path towards how we all work together beyond the hiring. You know, but I'm totally in support of that. I think there comes a time where. There needs to be the like, okay, what's well, totally on the scope of that? Yes. So, yeah, that's my thought. And the city has agreed to work closely with us on building this uh, health and safety program with a particular eye to crime, which is different than some of the health issues that are related to our safety. So um, we think we've got the right player in place with Compass, uh, ESDA, assuming it has a BIA, and um, the city that are police department. Absolutely, and like, obviously Compass is on board for helping you know the individuals right. that really do need that crisis re response in in the context of how we're actually helping public safety. But we also have 140 units of low-income, highly vulnerable individuals with on a Broadway property that are preyed upon by people that you know are now taking advantage of the system. It is, uh, and that makes it part of us, right? We have to hire private security companies. To manage some of those situations, right? So the it, it all it all plays together, um, and I would hate to put a bandaid on something that really is a much larger systemic issue, right? I think mean, Paul was talking about it. There need to be corrections to the unintended consequences of some of these decisions, right? Yeah, I really wish the individual from the EPD who presented to us, you know, they said the, the number one thing is particularly the drugs right now, we're not at all, he's, he was saying he's not at all suggesting that we need to arrest our way out of the situation, but right now they can't even go to that next step to try to avoid a worse outcome for individuals, right? And that's what I'm describing We have individuals that regularly prey on them in the care of compass that really we can't do anything about it, so. Yeah, um, Compass Health, how they hope, hope works, every gospel mission are all, Spending breakfast service dollars in hiring security Absolutely. around the facilities to protect the residents and the uh, and the customers and the, and the uh, um, patients of those organizations. And <clears throat> there are other organizations that have you know joined this effort, like the YWCA. Uh, like Kaiser Permanente, they that have customers that um, come to their locations and are at risk of um, and the fear of safety issues. So there's a that, that whole service delivery capacity is is jeopardized by inadequacy of a effective public safety program. Yeah, we're about to redevelop our property too, and now we have to have uh, the buddy system to go out to. Uh, our parking lot for our employees because of safety issues in that area too, like the systems are all ready off. So the only thing I'd say is what technically going on five is kind of the first point to talk about partnership between existing traditional law enforcement and first responders. Yeah, so some of the business owners in the neighborhood 
also considered plot in or kept origin or history centers. Could be like quite like we could have homeless people wandering in that door with some lame excuses for getting there. What do you do? Really a problem. So I, I'm done with this portion. <laughs> um, so the board will next week, uh, we will know more about the BIA following the Wednesday vote. Then we'll have a greater conversation both about a strategic plan for the five year period as well as next year in specific. Uh, and so all of the, the budget strategic planning is up for this final uh, board meeting next week. Your input today is helpful for shifting that board. So thank you. Um, you know, we've had a fourfold increase in the budget that was adopted last year and the proposed budget, growing from $140,000 organization to $500,000 organization. And we need a, a vision, a four or five year vision of where we are going and what we envision these solutions really looking like over time. Because you build it incrementally. There's no windfall funding or financing to fund it all from in. So you build it incrementally. So we've got a great opportunity next year, but we got to be clearer about what our priorities are and how we grow this and how we sustain what we've started. Uh, looking at for the first phase of this in 2023. So appreciate all of you being a part of this today. Uh, next Wednesday at City Council, a pivotal moment. Uh, it, uh, it is critical that we have a full court that so that council members uh, know that there's a large number of Businesses at stake and uh, organizations uh, seeking to provide solutions, and that uh, public safety is our priority number one. With that as a foundation for the neighborhood, we can go in many different directions to help the city achieve its goals around housing and public transportation and climate action and, uh, and uh, a thriving business environment. Um, all the things that are in this neighborhood. So, help us find the people that will write a letter or uh, show up at the meeting next, next week so that it is abundantly clear to our mayor, our city staff, and to the town council that this is really important for the future of this neighborhood, which is the gateway, going to be more and more the gateway into our city over time. The meeting at City Hall is in the um, an old historic city hall, so it's, yeah. it's where the police department is, except for the police department. Yeah. Well, it's the council chambers. Yeah, the council chambers. Yeah. 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 Yeah.